Celestial blessings, my name is Helen Dimitriou and today I'm going to discuss something that you'll find many many videos about which many many pagan circles talk about, argue about and that is how can you be pagan and have Christ as your God? Now I have many many comments and emails asking me the same thing either arguing with me that it is impossible it is impossible for a pagan to have Christ as their God or I have those that ask me I'm a pagan but I can't let go of Christ because I know that Christ is real or I'm a pagan and I have Christ as my God but I can't share this with other pagans because of the ridicule or their adamant ignorance that Christ cannot be a part of my belief system because Christ belongs to Christianity and the two don't mix. Even the Wiccan teachers and adepts say that you can be pagan and you can have Christ as your God. Now how is this so? Christ is a dying and resurrected God or he is the dragon slayer or he is both. He has incarnated in history as different sun gods, different dying and resurrected gods, different dragon slayers and if you do your research on the dying and resurrected God you're going to find him time and time again. Now, how can you be pagan and have Christ as your God? How do they both match when they both are so different to each other that they both contradict each other? Well, number one, you can be a pagan and believe in only one God and that it could be any God. It could be Osiris, it could be um, Mithras, it could be Poseidon and you could just follow that one God. You can be pagan and be monotheistic. You don't have to believe in many gods to be, to be granted the right to be called a pagan. But you can be pagan and have Christ as your God because Christ does not belong to Christianity or any single religion. You can be pagan and have Christ as your God. It doesn't mean that you go to church or follow the Bible. It doesn't mean that you are a Christian in the sense of being a Christian. You can have Christ as your God and you do not need to follow any dogma. You only need to have your own belief system that Christ is a God and that his consort is any of the Venus, Sophia, Shekinah, Sophia, which I've already mentioned, um, incarnations of the goddess. And you know that I've spoken about this so many times and those are Ishtar, Astarte, Mary Magdalene, it can be Inanna, Aphrodite, Anat, etc, etc, etc. There are so many goddesses that are from the same root and they're all the consort of the dying and resurrected God. Maybe there's one or two that aren't but they still have the attributes as the, of the Venus goddess. We have many times um, people that, that are so adamant that you can't do this or you can't do that. Why can't you? Who gave you authority to tell people what they can or can't do. If that person has come to a realization or a level of enlightenment and for them a certain God is their God who called them, who visited them, 
who are you to say to somebody that it's not possible really these people that go around saying this about people can't be pagan and Christ are those that one they don't know anything about that person's practice they don't know whether that person goes to church or reads the Bible number two they build a belief based on ignorance when they haven't really done any research on it but usually they're just looking at the surface or listening to what someone else has said which happens a lot in the pagan community which I call Chinese whispers and they parrot it and they've not spent the time to have the right to build an opinion and have the right to have any say in somebody who is a pagan who follows the Christ now why do I always keep talking about this I talk about this because my channel is a place of learning and I know that many people want to believe in the Christ even if they don't follow him or have him as their God they want to believe in the Christ yet they feel so intimidated by die-hard pagans that they are afraid to follow what's in their heart because of the pressure and the ridicule from other pagans now the thing is it's not right to suppress someone else's choices or inspirations or enlightened communication with the divine because of your issues with the church or with Christ or with both just because you hate and despise Christ and the church based on the the lies that you've been told and the fact that you haven't bothered to truly truly research who he was and who he is it doesn't give you the right to project your issues onto someone else who has been called by the Sun God to follow him to worship him to have him as their God now there are many many religions in history pagan religions that were all dedicated to the Christ such as Bacchus he had his followers his initiates such as Osiris such as Mithras and those two and Marduk they had their own orders their own cult and they were known as the saviors of the world and the priests were taught to go out and preach the logos of that God preach the word of that God and to get as many people as possible to convert to that religion so when we're all laughing and joking about oh Christians are trying to convert me and etc I know that it's annoying and I don't like it but it didn't start with Christianity it started thousands and thousands and thousands of years before Jesus was born and all of them follow the same belief system all of them have the same beliefs regarding the dying and resurrected God who died and was resurrected who is the savior of mankind who is the son of God who is the son of the son and you can research this you can research the religions and the cults of the sun gods or the dying and resurrected gods they're not exactly the same as the personification of the sun which are for example uh, Shamash Utu or Helios but they are the dying and wrecked sun, dis, resurrected sun gods, fertility gods. They're also the dragon slayers. And you'll find that throughout history. So that which you despise so much. I remember talking to somebody who was a follower of Osiris. 
and they constantly, constantly was ridiculing Jesus and saying, oh, Jesus was a people believe in a zombie and um, these people must be stupid because he's, they think that he was going to save them and you can't, you're only saved through Christ. And basically, that's what Osiris is. Osiris was a zombie, if you want to see it that way. Marduk was a zombie. Dumuzi was a zombie. Mithras was a zombie. Dionysus was a zombie. Adonis was a zombie. They're all the same gods. There is the pattern that cannot be denied. It is there in front of us. And I can't understand why it's so difficult for people to see that as the truth, as the connection. And then you'll say, well, I believe that Jesus existed and that he was a prophet. But I don't believe that he was a God. How can a man be a God? Well, how can a God die? in the first place how can Osiris die or Mithras die or Marduk die if they were gods think about it they had to be mortal in some way to be able to be killed and it is the same thing with Jesus and it is the same thing of all the incarnations of the Christ it is there in black and white so if you want to follow Jesus or if you want to have Christ as your your God and you're a pagan that is perfectly fine there is nothing wrong with having Christ as your God and one of the reasons again why I keep going on about this is one because I've said the questions and the comments but also it is my mission to show people comparative mythology and to show them that the Christ is not a God that belongs to Christianity he doesn't belong to them and to be honest if Jesus or Christ were to come back his biggest enemy would be the Christians his biggest enemy would be the church because everything that he taught is not being taught in the churches and what he taught had been taught many times in the different religions preceding his incarnation back onto earth Jesus himself was an initiate in the Egyptian the Persian the Babylonian mystery schools and his students were the 12 disciples who he was teaching they were all part of a mystery school they were all the initiates because everything that Jesus taught was alchemy it was um, from Pythagoras it was everything it was Buddhism which this was taught in the mystery schools and you'll notice if you have read the Bible that even though I don't 100% believe that those were the words of Jesus the lessons that he gives to his students are different to the lessons that he gives to his followers with his students he always told them to find the truth he always spoke in, in riddles and he never gave them the answers until maybe a lot later they had to work it out for themselves because it was part of the training yet when he spoke to the crowds or to his followers he explained his parables to them he explained the meanings and you can see it clearly in the Bible but you don't need a Bible to follow Christ you don't have to believe in the Bible it doesn't have to be part of your belief system to believe in Christ I read parts of the Bible because it is part of um, it is a part of the Sumerian tablets for example in Genesis and the first books 
you know these it, it had already been written thousands of years before the Bible was written or any of the books of the Bible was written and I got used the Bible because there were, it was also written by mystics so even though I don't believe in the Bible and I don't go to church I still find valuable information in the Bible because all books are full of learning and knowledge and wisdom and I'm not going to kick away a source of knowledge just because I'm pagan and I don't want to have anything to do with Christ or with the church it's a completely different um, different thing there are pagans who do go to church why do they go to church because when the people that go there the congregation they're calling upon Christ and wherever a God is called of one or two people the God comes so when you go to church you can feel the Christ and that is why some go to church there's nothing wrong with it and you don't have to be somebody who makes these sarcastic snide remarks about Jesus and how you know if you want to have a problem with the Christians go ahead you know it's not Christ the one that is condemning you and crucifying you why are you blaming and hanging your issues on Christ when it is those who claim to be his followers are the ones that condemn pagans and paganism now you'll find that like especially on Facebook we get this um, comparative um, these comparative posts taken from Zitzgeist or Zitgeist <laughs> Zitz. <laughs> and basically it's saying that Horus was born of a virgin he went around with 12 disciples, he had 12 disciples born on the 25th of December whatever Mithras had 12 followers died and resurrected sun god 25th of December etc and you'll find that they post it not to say hey look you know it's the same as Jesus so Jesus has got to be those sun gods no people don't think like this they don't think that they think ah oh, you see you stole the idea you took the pagan idea away from us and you took it for your religion and you created a God and called him Christ and made him be born of a virgin and born on the 25th of December or on the 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 the, the winter solstice and died and resurrected you see this is how the wrongful way of thinking and I can't seem to get into why people can see that it's the same as Jesus yet they don't seem to be able to connect these gods all together instead they're saying well you see we had all this first well imagine imagine the cult of Marduk okay and all of a sudden the cult of Mithras came along who had exactly the same story as Marduk they're probably gonna say oh you see those followers of Mithras they took our idea it's the same thing or whoever preceded um, whoever um, preceded from Dionysus with the same story ah you see they took from us they took our ideas and they they using it as their own but originated from us when from all in history the first God male God to die and be resurrected to slay the dragon was Marduk and then you see after him we have all the others so imagine it's like them saying they're all pagans but it's like the cult of Marduk saying 
they stole our idea. If it's an idea, then it means it's not true, yes? Can you understand where I'm going with this? So forget that they're using this part from Zitgeist to, to say that the Christians stole these pagan ideas of the resurrected, dying, resurrected God. Number one, they don't see the blatant connection. And number two, they don't seem to realize that in this documentary that is comparing all these pagan gods with Jesus and saying that they have the same story, at the end of it, they're just saying that there is no God, there was no sun God, that it was all to do with the... the um, the changing of the seasons and the sun and the rising and the setting of the sun. So really, you people are shooting yourself in the foot because this documentary is all about there is no God and that there is no God, there is no sun God. And the only reason people believed this was they created a God that wasn't real and that was because of the seasons and the, the rising of the sun and the solstices and etc etc so what you're doing is you're pushing this documentary which goes against all that you believe because you believe for those a majority that believe in the gods you're pushing their belief when it goes against what you believe so basically they're insulting you but you're using their material to insult another religion or, or the Christ himself or Jesus. I mean think about it. You are pushing material that has been created that insults your beliefs to insult another religion or a God it doesn't make sense and I bet you that those that do share this either one they never researched the Zitgeist um, documentary they never watched it to the end and understand that it's saying that there are no gods that it was created by the people uh, to explain the rising and the setting of the Sun and number three you, you, you don't know that it's, a, it's an insult to all of us that believe in the gods. <laughs> this is what I'm saying about Chinese whispers and parroting. People only see things on the surface and take it as gospel truth. Now how can anybody build an opinion or even a belief system without even researching what they believe? And some say I don't need to know all of the literature written in history about my God. I can just believe in my God. And you can. That is perfectly fine. If you don't want to research, you don't need to. You can just listen to the words of your God. Obviously, when I say your God, I mean your God or Goddess, your deity. But when you want to impress and something onto another person or group of people to to have um, to have a dig to say you see the pagans had this before you did you need to know what you're talking about don't be ignorant and don't oppress others. You didn't like being oppressed in your previous religion. There's not many people who were born and brought up pagan. The majority of them are coming from a Christian background. You didn't like the oppression of the church. So why are you doing this to other people? Just because you have issues with the church or with Christ doesn't mean that you have to project those issues onto everybody else. We're supposed to be the eclectic meaning we're supposed to have the right to be free to believe what we want and to follow what we want. Yet on one hand the Wiccans who don't believe in Satan think 
they're, they're more tolerant of Satanists, even when they don't believe in Satan, than of pagans who want Christ as their God. Does this make sense to you? I can't understand how, you know, this makes any sense. That you don't believe in Satan, yet you tolerate Satanists. But you don't tolerate a pagan who believes in Christ. Or you don't like psychic vampires. You don't agree with psychic vampires or energy vampires, yet you tolerate them, even though it's harming other people. But you don't tolerate pagans who want Christ as their God. Now I know that when I start talking about this subject, I get people that thumb down my video. And the reason why they thumb down my video is because they don't want to hear what I say or they don't like my confidence when I'm talking about this subject. But we're talking about a God that is part of a pantheon of gods and is connected to most or all these gods because if you look at the pantheons they're part of a family tree and they're all connected in some way or another they have fathers they have sons they have sisters they have brothers grandmothers granddaughters whatever they're all connected so for the fact that you're going against one of these these gods in a pantheon you're going against the whole family you don't have to follow every god you don't have to follow christ you don't have to have him as your god you don't have to believe he's a savior you don't have to believe that he died and resurrected you don't have to believe that he slayed the dragon yet at the same time don't impress your false beliefs or ignorance onto someone else and suppress them like what the church does. Do not judge people for their choices. If it's harming nobody, why are you getting so involved and why are you so ignorant to think that you have the right to tell somebody that you can't be pagan and have Christ as your God? Now there are many Christo witches, there are many Christian pagans. They either call themselves Christian because they're a follower of Christ and you'll find that in history anyone that followed a certain god or goddess was named after the god or the goddess that they follow. In this case it's Christian. You know if you followed Mary Magdalene you could be called a Magdala. It's the same thing and you have to understand this and you have to stop oppressing other people. I'm not saying everybody because I know there are thousands of pagans that believe in Jesus because even Christianity has its roots in paganism. We know this. All the religions have their, their roots in paganism. The pagan religions they took from other religions and created a religion, a belief, a cult. Nobody comes up with a new concept. Everything is taken from each other and put into a religion or whatever. And people, if they resonate, they follow with that one thing. So Christianity, we know we know they have their roots in paganism. I mean, how many times do we have to hear this and see this? We're not stupid, the majority of us. We know it. You know, it's, it, go, it stands to reason that the rituals and everything in the Christian church is pagan rooted. It comes from paganism. I mean, I get a, I've got a following of... Um, pagans that believe in Christ or even Christians who follow pagan traditions and that is because they've got nowhere else to go basically because there is such um, prejudice and uh, judgment over 
people who are who have Christ as their God that they have nowhere else to go I mean don't you think that people should be ashamed of themselves if they're they're closing door to everyone that's trying to learn just because they believe because of their issues that you can't have Christ as your God or they don't believe that um, the God incarnated at different times they believe no that's it Osiris, there was only one Osiris, there's no other, he's never been anyone else, that is Osiris, end of story. Or they don't believe that there are different archetypes of the goddess and there they are manifestations of the goddess and they say, no, my goddess is the only goddess um, for this thing and there are no other goddesses that... Uh, that are connected or um, then I believe they're connected but they're a different goddess I don't believe that they're the same goddess even though they have incarnated at different times in history they don't want to accept it fine if that's what you want to believe believe it but stop suppressing other people who have found their own truth and their own belief system and that's what they want to follow that is what is seems the most natural for them for me people ask me okay so your God is the Sun God Christ now the thing is I have many different gods meaning I follow the Anunnaki pantheon of the Sumerians so there are many times I will call on Lord Enki sometimes I will speak with Lord Anu sometimes I will speak with Lord Enlil and many times I will speak with Lord Marduk there are times I will speak with Osiris there are times that I will speak with Mithras it all depends on who comes to me to communicate but when I call for help to a god and not the goddess I'll call on Lord Enki or Lord Marduk who are father and son Enki is Marduk's father that is who there are times I will call on Jesus you know or times I'll have a representation of Jesus on my altar but to me when I look at that I just see all the other sun gods and all the dying and resurrected gods all the dragon slayers to me when I look at that I see those that pattern that the Christ in, in, in manifestations it is the same as my goddess is the goddess Inanna but when I look at Aphrodite or Ishtar or, in, or um, uh, who else Anat or Venus to me they are the same goddess that is the Venus goddess it's the energies it's the same incarnations it's the same uh, pattern it's the same being you know these are my gods but primarily I do follow the Anunnaki they're the ones that I'm most connected to and the ones I'm I, I get visited by the most because as you know I channel every day if you go over to Esophoria Mystery School my other website you'll see the channels there's many channelings and most of them are coming from the Anunnaki gods so that's who I follow for those of you who have asked me and curious is if I believe in you know Christ who do I have as my representation of Christ there are some that don't have a representation they just believe they keep him in his cosmic force you know the cosmic Christ they don't have a representation of him they don't feel they need to have an idol for me mine is usually Marduk but I, I follow all of these these gods and their families so I follow and respect and honor all of the Anunnaki gods because they're a family and they're my family and they're our ancestors so I hope that I've cleared everything up <laughs> thank you so much for listening I love you lots and lots bye bye